Good day. So the question is, what are some natural remedies for IBS for irritable bowel syndrome? Uh, Dr. Peterman, what do you think about that? I think that there is such a thing. I've seen some of the uh, wonderful benefits of natural healing and natural remedies for IBS. Colitis and uh, various other uh, celiac and other related uh, problems that people have in their gut. What do you think would be one of the best things to do initially? Well, I would probably uh, think about considering what what type of food I was eating if I had something in that regard. You think that has something to do with it? With your nutrition, your intake? I do. I think it has a lot to do with it. Matter of fact, a lot of people who have the problem are allergic to wheat or any kind of cereal grains. Those kind of materials are uh, food for bad bacteria in the gut. And um, let me see, I've got some notes written here. The um, IBS is almost totally the result of an allergy in the gut. You're, you're putting something in the gut that the gut doesn't like. And key word, first word, irritable. It's irritable. Okay, when we were children in junior high, we would be irritable. We would go up and I'd pull somebody's collar back and dump a little itching powder down them and they were irritable. No different to the bowel. We're doing it to ourselves. We're putting itching powder, if you will, in our bowel. We're putting something in there that the body just says, man, I can't stand this. Oh gosh, I got, I got, I got to go to the bathroom. Okay, so we head down to the hall and sometimes it gets so bad that doctors will put you on so much different kinds of medication and nothing helps. It just keeps getting worse. And they say, well, there's, there's virtually a hole in your gut at this point. You have, you have really a bad section of your bowel. We got to take that out. So they shorten, shorten the bowel and keep going. And sometimes people end up with no bowel. Literally, they chop it up until that irritation's gone. Or they will give you some material that it's, uh, uh, will lower your immunity. Doesn't sound like a good idea, but you no longer have irritable bowel. That's because you've told the body, ignore it doesn't matter if it's real and there's a problem. You're not going to have a problem anymore. Oh, now I don't have the problem. It's like very similar to I'm so depressed. Put them on Prozac. I'm not depressed anymore. You know. Well, that's what the bowel is. I'm just fine. Everything's great. You can feed me whatever you want. Well, that's all fine and good. But what happens when you come in contact with somebody, example, some of the uh, products that are sold on television, is this product good for you? Ask your doctor. They tell you up front, do you have open wounds? Do you have flu? Do you have any kind of tuberculosis? Are you around anybody like that? The reason they say that is, you take the product, you have virtually no immunity. Well, you're not gonna have to go to the bathroom all the time, but you better not be around anybody better not cut yourself, better not live on a farm, um, that kind of situation. You, you're at the mercy of everything, and they'll say, has been associated with some forms of cancer. But the people are smiling, and the music is up, and everybody's happy. All right. Our job is to discuss natural remedies. There are natural remedies. So we need to start thinking about subtracting foods from your diet when you're not on some of these immunosuppressants. If you just have irritable bowel and you're not taking any medication, that's great because then we can start taking things away. And I have found in 90, well over 90% of the clients that I deal with in our clinic that if we just take these people off of any form of grains, 
That's wheat, oats, rye, barley, any kind of cereal grains, because guess what those things are? Those are grass. Cows eat grass. Humans don't eat grass. I mean, we've been eating grass for 2,000 years or more in the form of breads and everything else, but that's not what was eaten 2,000 years ago. It's not what we have now, because now we have five times the amount of gluten in our wheat flour than we had 50 years ago. Why? Because it's tasty. It really tastes good. You get a donut and it strings out, you know, and it's it's so gooey and it tastes so great. That seals up gluten, by the way, is a Latin word for glue. Oh, eating glue. Oh, yes, you are. The, the inside of the gut has little filii, little hairs that help pull the, pull the nutrients out of what's going through the gut. Well, if you eat enough bread or gluten-laden products like donuts and everything else, those little filii, because of what's going through the gut, stick to the walls, and they don't come back out and harvest the food that you're eating. They stick. They're glued. And the more you See. eat, the more glued they are to the point. I saw one man who's 76 years old and ate three slices of bread with every meal. He said, well, I used to be 250 pounds. I'm 140 now. And I'm, I said, you're 140. You're six foot three. This guy could hide behind a flagpole. I mean, poor guy was just wasting away. And irritable bowel, oh yeah, oh my gosh. This guy's irritable bowel was in the Guinness Book of Records, I would say. It was horrible. I've never seen anything like it. I never want to see anything like it. But he would not give up bread. And I said, you're you know, you have a great chance of, I know if I ate that kind of, of food, I would be in your condition. I would have no way to absorb any of the nutrients that I'm eating. I said, you're losing, you've lost 30 pounds in the last six weeks. Does that give you a clue that there might be a nutritional problem with the food that you're eating? And he says, I'm not giving up my bread. And he turned to his wife, Martha, this guy's crazy. We're going, out, going home. Okay. He gets up and leaves. I don't know if the man's still alive. That's six months ago. But at the rate he was going, uh, I wouldn't have given him six months because he had no more energy. He almost crawled under the door. He was, he was so incapable of of moving because he was just like, you know, he, he got riled up. And that's probably the only energy that he had when I said, you, you might want to consider not eating bread because it doesn't like you, most likely. At least not for a couple of weeks. I've eaten bread all my life. I'm not getting up that. I love bread. Okay, let's get out of here. Okay, fine. That's a remedy for irritable bowel. Now, if you stop eating bread, go out and get yourself some probiotic. Get yourself some live sauerkraut. Drink some kefir. Um, I drink kombucha because it is so good for you. Drink a little kefir. Eat some uh, uh, eat some uh, sauerkraut that's alive, not in a jar, but something that's in a container that's allowed to let the gas come out of it because it's still alive. Eat, eat uh, a suggestion. I, what I do, if, if I'm not feeling well, I will eat uh, at least a tablespoon at every meal throughout the day because in a day or two, I'm feeling great because my bacteria in, in the bowel has been restored. So that's what I have on IBS. And you try some of those things, and I think you'll see some, some results. Keep listening because we're going to talk about this again. Dave, I like that, uh, that list you have. Dave's got a list of, of things you've suggested, and we're, we're really moved at all the questions you've been asking. 
So hit the like button if you like it and the subscribe button to find out what else we're up to. And until next time, be well. Be well.